Stop doing genocide is the most reasonable political demand ever. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. When Palestinians say they don't feel safe, they mean they're afraid of being killed by 2,000-pound bombs. When Zionists say they don't feel safe, they mean they're afraid of experiencing the psychological discomfort of encountering protests against a genocide that they support. Stop doing genocide is the single most reasonable political demand anyone could possibly make. It's so reasonable, it's insane it even needs to be made. You don't get to cry if people don't support your candidate because they didn't meet that ridiculously reasonable demand. It's maddening how liberals are acting like those who want an arms embargo against a regime that's presently committing genocide are making some kind of outlandish demand. It was freakish enough in 2016 and 2020 when they did this to progressives who wanted basic things like universal health care that everyone has in normal countries. But now they're actually taking the same, well, you've got to be reasonable with your demands, tone over people who want to end genocide. If you tell people it's unreasonable to demand an end to a genocide that's only possible because of your government, you are telling them they need to tear down the entire system which gave rise to this situation. You are telling them they have no other choice but to radicalize against everything you stand for. That's not people like me who are telling them this. It's you. I have written thousands of essays and millions of words trying to wake people up to the tyranny of the U.S. centralized empire we live under, but I have never written anything more effective at radicalizing people against imperial status quo politics than the supposedly left-wing political party of the world's most powerful government telling people it's unreasonable to demand that it stop committing genocide. There's an absolutely ghoulish poster supporting genocide monster Kamala Harris going around. It's covered in drawings of flowers and features the words Vote Joy written in 1960s hippie font. Everything about the push to elect Harris is joy, 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 joy. That's their entire message. We need a word that's stronger than dystopian for this. Democrats finally learn that they need energy and enthusiasm in order to win elections. So they start squealing about joy and fun and making memes and flower power posters. But they do it during an active genocide that's being perpetrated by the same administration they're feigning all this joy about. So now they're all running around, laughing and grinning and dancing as hard as they can, going online and having a great time making fun of how weird and stupid Republicans are, all party, 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 while kids are being ripped to shreds in daily massacres committed by a regime which has recently begun receiving a massive increase in U.S. weapons from the Biden administration. Haaretz reports that August has been the second busiest month for weapons shipments from the U.S. to Israel's Nevatim Air Base, second only to October 2023. I mean, seriously. What the fuck kind of crazed civilization does something like this? What a demented, maniacal way to behave. These freaks are dancing on the graves of mutilated children. They are laughing in the face of screaming parents, clutching tiny bloody body parts to their chests in the most anguish any human being can possibly experience. Lunatics. Bunch of deranged fucking lunatics. Trump isn't evil because he's another Hitler. He's evil because he's another Obama. So much emphasis gets placed on how different Trump is from other U.S. presidents when all the evidence of his actual presidency shows the most evil thing about him is how similar he is to them. And both sides do this. Both Trump's supporters and detractors frame him as some radical deviation from the norm, with his supporters not recognizing how fully aligned with the establishment swamp he is, and his detractors not realizing how depraved the norm actually is. Republicans believe Trump is going to end the wars and fight the deep state, Despite the fact that he did none of this while president, Democrats believe Trump is going to turn the U.S. into a Nazi dictatorship, despite the fact that he governed as the same kind of evil as all the other U.S. presidents. 
The United States is the single most tyrannical and murderous government on Earth, by an extremely massive margin. Trump is evil because he spent his administration going along with all that tyranny and murderousness, just like all those who came before him and after him, not because of who he is as an individual. If you think Trump is some freakish aberration in an otherwise acceptable status quo, it's because you don't appreciate how horrific the status quo is. Whichever side loses the U.S. election will claim it was rigged, either by Russia or the deep state or someone else. Of course it was rigged. The only two viable presidential candidates are both backed by billionaire oligarchs and warmongering swamp monsters. It was rigged right out in the open, from the very beginning, by the rich and powerful for the benefit of the rich and powerful both with campaign funding and with the billionaire media who normalize and manufacture consent for the fake two-party scam. But neither side will talk about that very real election rigging. So yeah, there's this tiny country in the Middle East that exists in a continuous state of extreme violence, and it constantly murders children and tortures and oppresses people but we absolutely have to make sure it continues to exist for reasons nobody can coherently explain. Israel isn't responsible for the existence of Western warmongering. Western warmongering is responsible for the existence of Israel. If there wasn't an Israel, they'd just invent another excuse to sow violence and division in the Middle East. Biden himself has acknowledged this, saying, were there not an Israel, the United States would have to invent an Israel to protect her interests in the region. The only leftist harm reduction argument for supporting Democrats that I can come anywhere close to respecting is the kind that says, I hate Kamala Harris, I hate Democrats, they're all pure evil and must go to the gulag come revolution but I support voting for them anyway for the same reason somebody in an abusive relationship gives the abuser what they want in order to survive long enough to escape another day. If you unequivocally denounce Democrats and dedicate yourself to showing everyone how evil they are and how they work hand-in-glove with the Republicans to promote murder, theft, and tyranny, then I can somewhat respect it if you say, But I think we should vote for them anyway because keeping the Republicans out of office for another term might slow down the murder, theft, and tyranny a tiny bit. Even though I personally believe the Obama and Biden administrations have conclusively disproven this claim. If you do anything other than this, if you shy away from talking about the reality of who Democrats are and what they do in any way because you want to make sure people aren't too disgusted by them to vote for them, then you are just lying, and you are manipulating people. You're just as depraved as the Democrats, who are just as depraved as the Republicans. You have to be absolutely clear that the Democrats are the enemy, and you endorse voting for them only because you think it's better to have a slightly slower, weaker enemy as often as possible, and your actions need to follow in alignment with this position. Otherwise, you're just another bootlicking manipulator. If your straightforward position is that Democrats are no less a part of the abusive power structure than Republicans, and you're just doing what you can to help improve your odds of surviving an abusive situation, then I have too much experience with abusive relationships to criticize you for that. But you've got to be real about what you're doing. You've got to be truthful. And your actions must be grounded in the same truth as your words. Trump and Harris are 99% identical in terms of the real policies they'll promote. Trump supporters and Harris supporters hate each other because of that 1% difference. I hate them both because of that other 99%.